Hey guys, it's Bro you Whack, and I'm so excited to be doing this specific top 5 video because this has been something I've been wanting to do ever since I started doing the top 5 series that I do every single Saturday where I leave it up to you guys to vote for what top 5 or top 10 video you would like to see. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be looking at the top 5 best cinematics, animated shorts, movies, whatever you want to call it, of Overwatch. Now when it comes to video games, we see a lot of different video games. Sometimes they're just multiplayer based, sometimes they're just story based, and sometimes it's a mixture of both. And Overwatch surprisingly has the best video game story without having an actual story mode. Why though? I just want some sort of story mode, some sort of campaign, something Blizzard. Please Jeff, I'm begging you, we're all begging you to bring us a story mode in the near future. But in the meantime, what we get are these tiny little animated shorts cinematics is what I like to call it because honestly these are on par with some of the movies that you watch in the actual movie theater and Blizzard puts these things out for free just for our enjoyment and you know this is one of the biggest reasons as to why I love Blizzard the company because they love this game as much as we do and you can tell in a lot of these animated shorts the time the effort the love the quality that they put in to really give us a snapshot of some of these heroes some of these action scenes and tell us a story of Overwatch or tell us a story of these specific characters without having a mode to tell these stories which is why I want So that's why I'm extremely excited to be looking at five of these specific cinematics even though all of them are amazing. But before we get on to the actual top five video I need you guys to quickly vote in the top right hand corner between the top five best maps versus the top five best heroes for skins. This will be next week's top five video and I dedicated a whole entire season looking at hero specific skins so I figured hey why not do a top five video where we look at the heroes that have the best skins so in case the stock market crashes and you need to invest in something else then you can invest in these hero skins that was stupid let's get on with the top five video here are the top five best cinematics of overwatch starting off our list at number five is going to be a classic cinematic you know i had to start this video off with some heat but it's kind of surprising because this video does not have a single word in it and this is going to be the last bastion <laughs> The Last Bastion is obviously the cinematic that focuses on Bastion and his tiny little bird that I still don't know how to pronounce his name correctly so I'm not gonna in this video in hopes of me sounding less stupid. But the thing that I love that I just mentioned before is that this cinematic does not speak a single word of any kind of language. So people of all different backgrounds, of all different cultures and languages can understand what is happening in this video and they can just feel the emotion, the intensity, the feelings that Bastion and the bird are experiencing and that just goes to show how good Blizzard is at telling stories with the fact that they don't need to say a single word for you to feel what's going on in this cinematic and let me tell you this whole entire video is a roller coaster of emotions without even saying a word and the symbolism that you get shown through the various different scenes in this movie is beautiful as well like when Bastion first wakes up this is like the birthing of a child it's pure it's calm it's nice you're walking through a forest and you make some friends along the way as shown with like the tiny little bird and that's just like in real life but then soon enough you see some tragedies you get you experience some, some heartbreaks some sadness when shown with the omnicrisis flashback and then he gets all angry he gets all mean and again this is all done without even speaking a single language and then soon enough he gets brought back down to earth and then he's happy again he doesn't need to continue the fight he is at peace with what has happened. He is at peace with his new life. The Last Bastion, it's storytelling at its finest without even saying a single word. Now at number four is probably gonna be a very popular one. And in fact, this is one that I kind of forgot about because it's one of the originals. And this is gonna be Hanzo and Genji's cinematic called Dragons. My family tells of an ancient legend about two great dragon brothers. The thing that really draws me to this specific cinematic, honestly, has got to be the colors. You see it with the cherry blossoms, you see it with the light blue dragons, the bright green dragons, you see it with the lights of Genji. The shots that you see throughout this cinematic is uh, uh, honestly a piece of art. Every single scene, you can honestly take a screenshot and it could be seen on like a wall of like an office or something. Instead of a stupid little tree, you're gonna see Genji almost killing Hanzo. 
Now that I think of it, maybe not an office, but you get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Another thing I also appreciate about this specific cinematic has got to be the background commentary. Because you see throughout the whole entire video action shots between Hanzo and Genji, this epic fighting scene, but then various different parts of the video, you hear this guy chime in to tell the story of Hanzo and Genji as if it was a fable, as if it was just a Japanese folk tale and reading it to a bunch of kids. And you're experiencing the fable visually, but also audibly. Audibly, uh, audioly. What? <laughs> and then at the very end, not only do you get to see Hanzo and Genji sort of make up in a way, but you also get to hear it being told through the form of a folktale. So that was a different approach towards a cinematic that I think could only fit Hanzo and Genji. It tells the story about two brothers, it shows the story about two brothers, and it shows it in this action-packed fighting scene with beautiful scenes. <sighs> That, that's why I love Blizzard because they don't just stick to one format of storytelling. This was a different approach that got inspired from Japanese traditional storytelling, which I can definitely appreciate, man. You knew this cinematic was gonna be somewhere on the list and you know I try not to be too biased when it comes to my top five videos, but this is one of the cutest cinematics and it tugs at my heart specifically, but I'm sure it tugs at a lot of people's hearts as well. And this is gonna be May's Rise and Sign cinematic. We're still in the middle of this mess Ice storm, it's crazy. I'm thoroughly surprised that May got a cinematic before a majority of heroes in the game because on the surface, it might seem like May doesn't have that great of a story. I mean, she's a scientist from China that is working for Overwatch, some of her friends die, and somehow she's a hero in Overwatch. And I don't know how Blizzard did it, but they made a cinematic that not only captured the story of May to make you really resonate with it, but also love it. And she's just a scientist. Like, okay, let me explain why I love this story specifically. On the surface, it might seem like May is this weak scientist that can't bring a lot of value to the world. And the theme of Overwatch, of the game, of the story, and what the message is supposed to send is that that's not what makes a hero. What makes a hero is what's inside of you. And this whole entire time, May has been this heroic hero that just needed to spread her wings and be free. Literally, because that's a metaphor for her being trapped in this science scientist arena or area whatever you want to call it on eco point antarctica and you see throughout the whole entire video of that progression of her being brought up and then being knocked down because her friends died but then being brought up again and then working hard to be able to save people that are in need of her help but then being knocked down again because the batteries died and then snowball almost died but then still finishing the work by climbing that freaking satellite tower and being able to get winston's message and then her being being courageous enough to handle the snowstorm, walking to wherever she's gonna go, don't know where she's going, because of what was inside of her all along, that heroic spirit. She just needed it to be brought up through hardship, through struggle. So yes, on the surface, it might seem like a stupid, lame character in a story, but that's what the story is supposed to show you is that it's not about what's on the outside it's about what's on the inside so hopefully that just kind of shows you as to why i not only like that cinematic because it has my favorite hero but because of the message that it gives and something that i can honestly relate to and probably a lot of you guys can relate to as well but now let's move on to the second best cinematic in all of overwatch this one it's straight up cool, man. It has some of those most BA characters in all the game into one tiny little movie. And this is gonna be the Ash and McCree reunion cinematic. Jesse McCree, been a while. You promised you'd write. This cinematic was unveiled at BlizzCon in 2018 and it was supposed to introduce the brand new hero Ash. And boy, let me tell you, they introduced the brand new hero Ash. And the fact that they also included one of the coolest cowboys in the whole entire Wild Wild West was great as well. But the thing that stole the show that everyone cares about is thick boy Bob. Everybody fell in love with Bob. Everyone wanted Bob to be the playable character that was going to be unveiled like literally right after the cinematic played. Now were a lot of people disappointed that Ash was the playable hero? 
actually not necessarily because she was just as cool. Now, granted, not as cool as Bob, but still just as cool. At least you got him as the ultimate. So the context behind the cinematic, along with the actual cinematic, with the action scenes, with the love scenes, and I ain't talking about McCree and Ash. I'm talking about McCree and Bob, and also the introduction of Echo makes this... Oh my god, that kind of cinematic, and oh my god, cinematic, that is the best description that I could give for this. But now, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the number one cinematic in all of Overwatch. Some of these cinematics have great storytelling, some of these cinematics have great action scenes, and some of these cinematics make you feel emotions for characters that at one point you might not have even cared about. And this specific cinematic has all three of those things, and even more told in only a few few minutes and this is gonna be Junkrat and Roadhog's Junkrat Town Cinematic! <gasps> I'm just kidding, yo. The actual number one cinematic in all of Overwatch is gonna be Reinhardt's Honor and Glory Cinematic. I am sorry, Roadhog Junkrat mains. I know that's your favorite. I know you're pissed off, but let me explain why this one is the best one. Because like I mentioned before, a good cinematic wants to have a memorable story. A good cinematic wants to have a character that you just care about, that you resonate with, that you get to experience their story almost firsthand. And they have to have great action scenes that is epic, that just wow, that wows you. And this cinematic has all of that, man. In the very first scene, you see the old beaten up battle scarred Reinhardt getting called back to Overwatch, which a lot of these cinematics have some sort of scene related to that because of the original cinematic of Winston recalling all these heroes back to Overwatch to tie in what could be possibly the Overwatch campaign that would be playable. And then after that scene, we get a quick flashback to his glory days where he had these luscious blonde locks and he was this cocky, arrogant crusader that just wanted honor and glory and to have fun with life and then on the opposite side of the spectrum you got his master that is a little bit more wiser a little bit more tougher and that is kind of like how Reinhardt is nowadays but then you see that being further enhanced by the actions of these two characters where the master is protecting everyone looking out for each other and not really having that much fun where Reinhardt is going balls deep in the enemy backline destroying all these Omnics having fun but not protecting anyone just being a kid because you see that he's still this arrogant child that's having fun with life. But then he goes and tries to take on the Or 15 and then gets completely murdered, just like in the game. And that's how you see how he loses his eye and how he becomes battle scarred. But then even after all of that, the wise master comes and helps Reinhardt and makes sure that he doesn't die and sacrifices himself because that is what being a crusader is all about, to die with glory. And then you slowly see the transition of Reinhardt Reinhardt being this childish, arrogant kid into what is now the Reinhardt nowadays, the wise, heroic hero that joins Overwatch, that takes his master's place. It has a great story with characters that you absolutely love and action scenes that are memorable that keeps you on the edge of your seat. So not only do we get to experience a movie, but we get to experience emotions of characters that we don't often see a lot of the time and that's why I really want some sort of movie, that's why I want some sort of campaign to be able to experience a lot of these heroes backstories because Blizzard does an amazing job when it comes to these games, when it comes to these characters that I want to experience more of it. And just these five cinematics gives you a snapshot of my appreciation for Blizzard, appreciation for these cinematics, appreciation for Overwatch. I love this game. I love everything that they put into it. And I could not be more lucky to be a part of a community that is honestly this supported. So... Anyway, guys, before I get any more emotional, I just want to thank you guys for this top five video opportunity, this top five series, and just honestly this opportunity to make YouTube videos for a game that I honestly still love. So anyway, guys, I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. More Overwatch videos to come, and bye.